And I do, I wouldn't say picture or visualize the characters, but I do come up with ideas of what I think they look like. I realize, you know, when I watch a movie later, I'm like, oh, that's not what I was thinking this person looked like at all. But I never pictured them. I just have a a sensation or a thought. I mean, that's, I'm just going to keep repeating that because that's the only way I can describe the way I think. It's just more like a felt knowing or sensation. Join the Discovering Your Mind Facebook group and enjoy discussions, ask questions, and participate in the podcast in fun and unique ways. Aphantasia is a condition characterized by an inability to visualize mental images in one's mind. If you have just discovered that you or someone you love has aphantasia, or if you're just fascinated by the subject in general and love learning more about it, you are in the right place. The Discovering Your Mind podcast delves into all aspects of the mind's eye, including aphantasia, hyperphantasia, and everything in between. Welcome to the Discovering Your Mind podcast, brought to you by shanesbraindomain.com. I am your host, Shane Williams, also known as Shane's Brain. And today we are talking with the one and only Elena Delisle. Welcome to the show, Elena. How are you doing? All right. Hello. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Thanks for having me on. You are welcome. Why don't we just start out with you telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do for a living? Sure. I am a music teacher and a musician, and I teach at a school for homeschoolers. So it's grades K through eight. And um, I do everything from music and movement with the little ones and um, intro to instruments with the grades three through five. So we do ukuleles and xylophones and drums and body percussion and all that kind of stuff. And then I have two levels of guitar classes and I lead a choir. And I also teach K2 PE at this school. Um, (laughs) Yeah. And then I teach private lessons, piano and guitar as well. Um, And I also on Fridays, I go over to two different senior citizen homes and and lead sing-alongs. Plus, I've got two teenagers and a dog and <laughs> husband. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So you're busy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> got a right. lot going on. Yeah, sounds fun though. Do you enjoy all that? I do. Yeah, it's it can be yeah. tiring, but it's it's you know, I can't complain. <laughs> it's a great way to make a living. Very good. What about uh, hobbies and other interests? What else do you like to do? Yeah, well, I'm a musician, so I'm a guitar player and uh, spend a lot of time playing music um, with friends, play a lot of swing music and uh, some bluegrass. I play this very obscure music from Southwest Mexico called Calentano music that is um, super fun and rare. And I'm really into my garden. I, I'm really into my house plants. Love hanging out with my dog. I, I just started playing pickleball this summer, which is really fun. <laughs> In this episode, we will be referring to what we call the apple graph. If you would like to view the apple graph to play along and better understand what we're talking about, you can find it on shanesbraindomain.com in the Aphantasia and Beyond section. If you are unable to view the apple graph for whatever reason, it is a graph divided into six sections. In the number six section, there is a very detailed image of a red apple. In the number five section, it is the same image but with less detail. Number four is still in color but has less detail and more basic shapes instead of detailed hues and gradients. Number three is the less detailed apple but in gray tones without the color. Number two is a simple outline of the apple. And number one is blank, indicating no visualization whatsoever. This is called aphantasia. The first thing I'd like you to do is imagine a red apple in your mind. (laughs) Yes, we are going to do. We're starting there. Yep. (laughs) All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you real quick. All right. Which one of those best represents what you saw in your mind's eye? Definitely one. All right. So you have aphantasia. Can you just tell me your story? Tell me about how you found out about it and what it's meant to you since that happened. Well, I never knew people could actually visualize things. (laughs) I always thought that was a figure of speech. 
So, you know, I used to do like a lot of meditation and they'll say, say things like picture the, the white light or like coming into your body or whatever, stuff like that. Or, you know, picture yourself on a relaxing beach. And I never knew that I wasn't very good at that. Like I thought, well, if I'm just thinking about the thing, um, I don't remember exactly how I found out. I think I must have come across an article about it. And my mind was totally blown. Like I irritated all my friends and family by just constantly wanting to talk about it. And just for like yeah. months, I would see people and say, wait, can you picture an apple? I mean, can you actually see it? Like, and um, yeah, I was the same I, way. Yeah, still I, I, couldn't, I still can't <laughs> believe it. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's crazy to me. You know, then I just started sort of hyper focusing, obsessing about it and just reading every article I could find about it and listening to podcasts. And like, I also learned that I'm pretty sure I also have SDAM because I've always been like, I hardly remember anything. And my siblings would just be like, you don't remember that, you know, stuff from our childhood. And so that's a whole different can of worms. Yeah. For the listeners, just real quick, explain what SDAM is. Yeah, it's called severe deficient autobiographical memory. And it's when you just basically don't remember much at all, you know, and it's common in, in people with aphantasia. Not everybody with aphantasia has it, but a lot of us do. Because, you know, now I'm in all the Facebook groups. I'm constantly chatting with other people who have it. Like, I'm just so fascinated by it. And reading that, I thought, God, that sounds exactly like me. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've got both conditions. Do you know about how long you've known about it? Probably about a year or two, maybe. I'm terrible at remembering timelines of things, like anything like that. When someone says, like, how old were you when that happened? I'm terrible at remembering. But I think it's been at least a year, maybe two, maybe a year and a half. Okay. Yeah, and I'm still just as fascinated. Like, I can't believe that people can actually, like, vi visually see things in their mind. I can't believe it. it. It still seems so bizarre to me. Yeah. And a lot of them don't believe that you can't. I know. A lot of people <laughs> think it's just, well, you're just describing it differently. I'm like, no, right. there is no way right. that I am visualizing anything. I am 100% sure that I'm not. <laughs> I remember when I first found out about it, which was for me over 25 years ago. Oh, way wow. before it was way before it even had a name or so I I felt like I stumbled onto something that like nobody knows about this like wow you well you did because people didn't really know about it back then yeah and I remember the first time I asked my dad if he could see pictures in his mind his immediate response was of course everyone can <laughs> right like it's just yeah. every it's just human nature. We all just assume that everyone is having the same experience. That's so crazy. And, all right. Uh, the next thing I'd like you to do is think of a chicken in your mind. Okay. Thinking of a chicken. Can you describe what that's like? How does that chicken manifest in your mind? Right. For me, it's just more like a felt sensation or like a sense of knowing. Like, I've thought about this a lot. <laughs> I know what a chicken is, you know, I know a chicken has feathers and has two feet. I know how they walk. And so I can think about it, but I definitely don't see it at all. Um, but there's just sort of a sense of knowing. It's just a, it's more of a felt sensation of a chicken. That's my, the best way I can describe it. Can you imagine it walking around? Is there any movement in your thoughts? I mean, I guess so. I can imagine it walking around. It, once again, it just feels like a feeling. It's so hard. It is so hard to describe, but it's a felt sensation of what I know about a chicken walking around, basically. <laughs> okay. Can you identify if there's any other background in the thought? I mean, I can think of about it in a in a yard scratching the dirt, or I can think about it, you know, walking through a field like, you know, there's no image. So there's, there's nothing inherently there. So do you think about color at all? Did you think about what color the chicken was? Not at all. Not at all. No. And if I can't I... remember colors at all. When so I, even just the other day, I saw somebody and I said, Oh, I think I just saw your friend or, and they said, Oh, was she wearing a blue shirt and a, and a white hat? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> right. I struggle yeah. with that too. Is there any difference in the thought depending on if your eyes are closed or open? Mm, not really. I don't think so. 
Is there any dimension associated to the thought? Like, is it 2D or 3D or 0D? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm going to go with 0D. What about manipulating the thought? Can you put a vest and a tie on the chicken in your mind? That is harder for me because I don't know what a chicken with a vest and a tie looks like. But um, but yeah, you know, I can think about a chicken. I can't put a vest and a tie on it because there's no chicken there. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I can, I can think about a chicken wearing a vest and a tie. It feels a little bit more difficult for me to do that. But yeah. Okay. If the chicken made a sound, could you hear it in your mind? I pretty much feel like I can hear things in my mind. Yeah. Okay. I can hear a pretty clear representation of what that would be. Okay, cool. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. So I'm going to read you four different phrases and you can let me know if those all mean the same thing to you and what they mean to you. Picture it, imagine it, visualize it, and think of it. Do all of those mean the same thing to you? Does anything different happen with different words? No, they all mean think of it. And I've stopped using picture it uh, because, (laughs) or visualize it. Um, But yeah, they all just mean think of it to me. In general, when you close your eyes, what do you see? It's absolute black. Unless, for instance, I'm looking at a computer screen and then there's a little bit of like leftover visual light on my eyelids. But other than that, it's just black. Can you think of nothing if you want to? I can. Yeah. It's just sort of a lack of thoughts. You know, if I could pay attention to the space between my thoughts and put my attention on that. I have practiced meditation quite a bit. And boy, you'd be amazed how many people on this um, Insight Timer app I have are uh, using visualization, like real visualization to try to get people to meditate more successfully. (laughs) It's like, man, I can't do that. But yeah, it just feels like uh, stillness and quiet. Have you ever had moments of visualization or something outside the norm? The only thing is when my daughter found something on the internet and was like, mom, look at this. That's what it's like. And it was something where it said, watch the dancing man and focus on the dot in the middle for like 30 seconds. Have you, I don't know if you've seen these and then close your eyes. Yeah. Yes, and then I you could see the dance again. So that actually worked for me. And I was just amazed. I was like, that's what it's like. You can actually see it. That's insane. Yeah, I've had some of those things work for me too. It's very fleeting. It only lasts like a couple seconds, but yeah, same. Exactly. Yeah. And I used to, you know, everyone started asking me when I started, like when I couldn't stop talking about aphantasia for like a year, <laughs> everyone started asking me, um, do you dream? At first, I couldn't tell if my dreams were visual or not. I was like, I have no idea. But sometimes when I'm drifting off to sleep, I'll get a little half awake dream sensation going. And um, lately, I've been trying to pay attention to that. Like, is it visual? And it's not. I don't think it is. I think it's just more like a felt sensation like everything else. But the dream question is hard to answer very it's very hard to tell but i don't think it's the same as somebody who's actually a visualizer you know in any way i had a friend who said when she goes to sleep she tries to picture she pictures the color blue like a specific blue and it helps her sleep i was like what (laughs) oh my god i can't believe people can do that (laughs) right just just the picture in a color is crazy yeah now we're going to talk a little bit more about the mind audio So I want to start again with kind of four phrases that we have in our society. And I want to see what they mean to you and see if you feel like you have what if you have them and if they mean the same thing. So we have inner voice, inner monologue, inner dialogue and self-talk. What do you think about those? I can hear my own voice in my head. In fact, I can hear people's voices extremely well which I didn't really realize until after I found out about aphantasia and started thinking a little bit. But like, if I get a text message, I can, if it's a friend who I know fairly well, I can hear it in their voice. Or if there's anybody who has a distinct voice, I can hear it when I'm reading something they've written. If I try to have a self-talk, I hear it in my own voice. When you hear the voices, can you identify the pitch and the tone of the voice? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So do you play out conversations in your mind? I don't think so. Really? Not really. Uh, I am a musician, so I hear music in my head. 
pretty distinctly. Would you say that there's always something audible going on in your mind? Does your mind ever shut up? I would say pretty much unless I'm focusing on trying to keep it, you know, I, like I said, I've practiced meditation and stuff like that. So um, if I'm trying to be mindful and practice that, then it will calm down. But otherwise, yeah, I, I think there's always some sort of a little chatter going on there or more often some sort of music. Okay. So when it comes to like sounds, like you said, you could hear the chicken. I've heard some people with aphantasia that can have audio in their mind like you. When I say think of a chicken, they won't see a chicken, but they'll hear a chicken. So it's almost like automatically attached to the thoughts. Is it like that for you or not? No. But if you say, uh, can you hear the chicken? My mind goes, <laughs> and I, yep, I can hear it. <laughs> okay. My son also has aphantasia and he cannot hear anything in his mind either. So yeah, that's how I am. That's Any interesting. Or anything. What does the phrase, I have a song stuck in my head mean to you? It just loops and loops and loops and loops and drives me insane. In fact, it keeps me up at night. I have to be careful what I practice. If I practice uh, a song too much, <laughs> I won't sleep that night. Actually, it like drives me insane. That happens to me a lot. And I have to even like, you know, because I teach. So we do the same song over and over and over again. <laughs> so my guitar students now I'm like, Oh, riptide. I'm never going to sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to the mind audio on a scale from one to 10, how much is it like actual hearing or how much does it resemble reality? I don't know, maybe three or four. I guess I'm just interested in if you can identify what the difference is. Like if it was like actual hearing, you would have said a 10, you said a four. Can you identify what the difference is? God, it's so weird. <laughs> to think about <laughs> because people who visualize things they go yeah i could see it it says just right. like i can see it like just as if it's right in front of me and you're just like what but that's not how i am with hearing at all like so weird to think about i mean obviously i'm not actually hearing it i can't it's like making me uncomfortable i'm trying to think about it i'm like Ugh. That's, that's okay that's okay <laughs> i don't know and i don't know um how different it is from just the felt sensation of thinking about a chicken that I have described, because it is almost a felt sensation of hearing a chicken as well, but there's something there. Right. Feels Whereas a little more real. Aphantasia, there's nothing there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. The more I talk to people, the more I have noticed that the hearing thing is so much harder to pin down. With the sight, they say, yeah, I can see it. With the hearing, it's almost like, I don't know, can I hear it? It's, it's sort of there, but, you know, it's like it's so much harder for people to answer that. Right. It has happened to me before. Like one time I went to a music camp out where there was a ton of fiddles and just fiddle music for like a week. And when I went home, I laid in bed and I thought, somebody playing the fiddle? I really thought there was like my husband was out here playing his fiddle because I heard it so strongly. Mm. But then I realized it was in my head. Share the gift of laughter with your children and grandchildren with books full of funny poetry and silly stories by Shane D. Williams, available on shanesbraindomain.com. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the other senses. So now I want you to think about you're at a movie theater concession stand and they hand you a big tub of freshly popped buttery popcorn. Can you smell it in your mind? Gosh, I guess maybe a little bit. My, it makes my stomach turn bleh, because that stuff literally, I've actually thrown up from eating that before. I can't eat that <laughs> stuff. But um, I know what it smells like, you know, once again. So that's right. really hard. I don't know if people usually go, yeah, I could smell it or what. <laughs> but, yeah, some people do. Really? It's, it's kind of all over the map like everything oh, else. Weird. But. Yeah, I would say... Um, I can imagine what it smells like. So since you don't really like popcorn, we're going to switch it to, we're going to switch like it to popcorn, a chocolate chip cookie. I like not that butter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I love chocolate chip cookies. Oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that one. A chocolate chip cookie. Can you taste that in your mind? I'm going to go with no. I know what it tastes like and I could describe it, but I can't actually taste it. Okay. And finally, what about touch? What about the sensation of touch? Could you 
imagine holding that warm gooey cookie or eating it and feel any of the sensations of touch. Ugh. And actually feel it? Well, again, I'm coming from, I can't do any of this stuff. So I'm just trying to understand what people are, are feeling. But there are some people like my son, for example, where touch is the highest sense for him. Really? He, can, he says it's, it's not only exactly like feeling it, it's even better. It's more intense. What? <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. No, I don't think yeah. I can do that. I mean, I just know what it feels like to hold a cookie or, you know, pet the dog. I can imagine it and think about it, but I can't feel it. And I didn't know that people actually could do that. Actually, I, this is my first time hearing this. In this episode, we will be referring to the carnival picture. If you would like to view the carnival picture to play along and better understand what we're talking about, you can find it at shanesbraindomain.com in the Fantasia section. If you are unable to view the carnival picture, it is a picture of a carnival at dusk with bright lights adorning carnival games and rides, including a large Ferris wheel with many people walking around. Do you have that carnival picture that I sent you? Yes, I have it here on my iPad. Okay. Okay. Can you put yourself in that picture? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm fascinated with that because I was having a conversation one time at a party with this guy who was, you know, hyperfantasia. He was blowing my mind and he said, well, let me ask you a question. And he pointed it to a picture on the wall and it was like a, like a factory type setting, but there was like sun coming through. He said, can you put yourself in that picture? I said, no, not even a little bit. Like, yeah. <laughs> and he said, I can put myself in my, that picture and I am there. I can feel the sun on my skin. Oh, I can my walk goodness. around and explore. He's giving me goosebumps. Yeah. That's crazy. So, <clears throat> so that's why I started asking people that because... Wow. And, and almost everyone says they can do it. What? Except for us. Except for us. Ah, that's crazy. <laughs> wow. All right. Now I'm going to start carrying this thing around. I'll put it on my phone and start. Can you put yourself in this picture? <laughs> nice to meet you. Put yourself in this picture. <laughs> that's how I am. I'm just like, so let's talk about a Fantasia. <laughs> right. Because it still absolutely fascinates me and blows my mind that people can do that. I, you know, when you've gone your whole life, you know, 43 years without knowing this even exists. Wow. I'm right there with you. All right. Let's talk a little bit about reading. When you read a novel, what is happening in your mind? Yeah, this I've thought about quite a lot. I do often imagine the spaces that the characters are in, like the house they're in, but it'll usually be one, like I'll realize after I've been reading it a while, like, oh, that's Nicole's kitchen or something like that I'm imagining. And so I'll put them in a space that I do know exists already. And it's obviously I'm not seeing it, but I'm I'm having a felt sensation of it or a sort of type of knowing that's hard to describe. <laughs> but um, and I do I wouldn't say picture or visualize the characters, but I do come up with ideas of what I think they look like. Okay. I realize, you know, when I watch a movie later, I'm like, oh, that's not what I was thinking this person looked like at all. But I never pictured them. I just have a a sensation or a thought. I mean, that's I'm just going to keep repeating that because that's the only way I can describe the way I think. It's just more like a felt knowing or sensation. And sometimes it does help me enjoy the novel more if I watch a movie first, which is the opposite of most people, because then I can really get a sense of what you know, other people would be picturing and I'm thinking about or whatever, you know, it's going to be more of a vague sensation about what right. I think the guy looks like. And and then when after I watch the movie, it's more of a clear thought. And especially like the location, like, I don't know, like I, my sense of space, I think it's different than a lot of people's. And I don't know if this is because of aphantasia, but like, for instance, if you told me even in my own house, like, well, okay, I could tell you what's underneath me right now because I've thought about it. But if I, if someone says like, if you go down to the basement and look up, what room are you pointing at? You know, let's say you're in the bathroom in the basement and I, I can't do that kind of spatial visualizing in my head. I'm very bad at that. 
it's just interesting in movies and, and books, like uh, being able to imagine the house and the, the room and stuff. I always have to think of something I already know about. I used to read a lot more and I used to love to read. Now it's more of a struggle just because of like technology addiction, unfortunately, you know. I kind of try to make myself read. I've had a really hard time finding books I'm interested in lately. And um, I, I stopped reading fiction completely. And I, I just, I love memoirs. I pretty much only read memoirs. What about the mind audio when you read? Do you hear the sounds or the characters' voices? Or do you hear your own voice reading? Or what's happening with the sounds when you read? Gosh, I feel like I need to pick up a book. <laughs> <laughs> Try it out. Here we go. Shots, food and drink miscellany. Let me just look. Yeah, I feel like I kind of hear my voice. What about audiobooks? Do you like audiobooks at all? Um, unless it's a subject I'm really interested in. I can't I have a trouble paying attention to them. I do listen to a lot of podcasts, but like I said, I'm not really into fiction anymore. So I don't sometimes I'll listen to nonfiction audiobooks. Um, but I tend to start my thought starts drifting and I have to rewind it. <laughs> and that happens to me with podcasts too sometimes, but um, right. I'm not a big audio book person. I have a hard time paying attention or like if like, say my daughter is like, can I read my paper to you? I'm like, let me just read it because it's much harder for me to pay attention if you're reading it to me than if I'm reading it myself. What do you do to fall asleep? I just try to relax. It takes me a long time to fall asleep. So what do you think makes it difficult? Is it the mind audio that's that's going that that keeps you up or what is it? Sometimes. Yeah, especially in the middle of the night, I often wake up with all these like ideas for my classes and stuff I want to do and so I'll, you know, get out my phone and just make a note of everything I'm thinking about, try to get it out of my mind. Uh what does the phrase counting sheep mean to you? <laughs> This was one of those things where I was like, wait, what? You mean people actually seeing them? Are you kidding me? My God. You know, every once in a while I try to do like count back from 100 by threes or something like that. And it's just my own voice in my head counting, you know. So we already talked a little bit about how it's hard for you to kind of identify what your dreams are like. You said you can't really tell if you see images can you tell at all if the dreams are in color or not? I don't recall. I would have to wait until I had another dream and then think about it right away, I think. What about this one? Can you tell if your dreams are in first person or third person? Oh, I would say first person. I did. I don't know if you're going to ask about hearing in dreams, but I did just have a dream the other night where I, I heard something very distinctly. So and I woke up hearing it. So that was interesting. It was a nightmare. And I uh, come up to a person who I've had major struggles with in the past. And I had told her, listen, don't say hi to me. Then she started saying, well, have you heard about this other person? And then we got into a gossip. And so I ended up talking with her. And then all of a sudden, everyone in the room dropped. And I realized there was a gunman in the space. And instead of dropping myself, I decided to run. And so I was running, but it was like that dream run where you're like, going through molasses you know and I couldn't run I was in my school where I teach and I was like I'm not going to go to my classroom because you know I don't know if they're going to know I'm there I thought they were trying to shoot me and then I heard someone going Elena 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 like that I still can hear it in my head it was so strong and I was in my dream and I woke up like <gasps> my heart pounding and this yeah. Elena Elena just like going through my head oh wow yeah it was cool. crazy when you're dreaming do you ever know you're dreaming I have had that once or twice, but you want to know something crazy? My daughter, she, similar to how we are with visualizers, she had no idea that most people don't always know that they're dreaming. She only dreams in lucid dreams. She right. always knows that she's dreaming. <laughs> and me, no, almost never. But I have experienced it a few times. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about your memory. You said you think you have SDAM. Mm -hmm. So if you want to recall a memory... How does it manifest in your mind? I would say it's just that felt sensation. Like, okay. let's see, I just walked my dog around the block this morning and I can remember what that was like. I can remember what it, where he sniffed and, you know, the treat that I had for him and 
but you know, there's nothing visual at all or smells or anything like that. It's just that I know what we did, but I, I don't remember hardly anything from like my childhood or my past. And, um, my memory is really not very good, basically. Do you experience your memories in first person or third person or both or neither? Like, hmm. like does, does that even feel like a thing? No, it doesn't even feel like a thing. I'm not okay. in it. I'm not in my memory. <laughs> okay. I guess. So, well, so, when yeah. you're, so when you're thinking about that memory of walking your dog, is it only information based? Like, I know what I did. I know what he did, you know, or does it have some resemblance of an actual experience, even though you can't see it? Do you know what I'm asking? Yeah, I get I get what you're asking. And I and, my, and the answer is pretty clear to me that it's not anything similar to an experience in any way. <clears throat> it's just sort of a knowing of facts. OK. All right. Very interesting. So it never feels like you're reliving an experience. Not really. But, you know, it's pretty interesting because as I had written to you, you know, I've gone through a lot of trauma and a lot of loss and grief and I did a lot of therapy and we did do some exercises where it was basically trying to get me to relive stuff so I could because I had suppressed it and so I could like go through the healing you know and we were able and I and this was right in the middle of my like I have aphantasia oh my god so I had told my therapist like I don't know if this is gonna work have you ever worked with someone with aphantasia like we need to make sure we understand that I can't visualize things and um, but I was able to, you know, I was able to kind of put myself in the situation with his help. You know, it was sort of going into like a meditation type thing. And then there's this um, this type of therapy called EMDR, which was actually really powerful for me, where they put like buzzing things in each hand to try to get your brain to do cross brain I don't know, become more organized across the hemispheres or something like that. And then he started bringing me through the old traumas. And the crazy thing about that was that I was able to really put myself there and come up with some emotion because I had really suppressed a lot. And then um, I went to bed that night. Uh, all these memories started flooding into me, which I had, hadn't remembered before. So you know, some people think that aphantasia can be, uh, some people have experienced um, the onset of it through trauma, which right. I don't think happened to me, but um, the memory thing possibly, because when we did that exercise with the, the EMDR, I had all these memories come flooding in almost to the point where it was uncomfortable. So that was pretty interesting. Right. Yeah, that is interesting. And then there was this other thing we did. It was almost like an inner child regression. Or it was like, let's go back and, you know, go back to your 16 year old self when you lost your mom and put yourself in her shoes and now like go there as an adult. And like, because I didn't have anyone there for me really. And she, you know, they're like, it was like, be there for her, you know? And that was also powerful for me. But I don't, I think it would have been way better if I had, didn't have aphantasia. And then I could actually. Right picture things yeah so therapy is really different in a lot of ways I think and grieving because I can't picture my mother's face or what you know I can't remember things in the same way people can so it's pretty fascinating I, I want to talk about that a little bit more the grieving thing how does that affect you I hear a lot of people say that like it never bothered them until they found out that other people can you know pull up the images of their past loved ones how has that affected your life because it seems like the trauma and some of those things have been very powerful parts of your life so I'm just curious how that specific dynamic has played any role I think that it's harder for someone with aphantasia to grieve because you know we have this real or at least I do I have this real out of sight out of mind thing where if I'm not seeing it, I'm not thinking about it really, you know? And so I think it's easier to kind of put it out of your head. And especially since you can't pull up memories and, you know, I'll see people online saying like, oh, I lost my father. I can still see him. And, you know, that kind of thing. And right. they actually mean it, that they can see him. <laughs> That's right. what freaks me out. <laughs> and so a lot of times, like in therapy, we're trying to go through like, you know, because I, I didn't grieve at all when my mother died when I was 16. You know, I suppressed it for many, many years. And I felt like I needed to look at pictures of her in order to bring up any emotion. 
And sometimes I think maybe grieving is easier for people with aphantasia. I think maybe it's easier to let go because I'm not seeing my dad or whatever. You know, I can't picture him. A lot of people, they picture the people and that makes them miss them. Right. And I can't do that. So what about the mind audio part? Can you hear them? Can you hear your loved ones? You know, my dad had all these little catchphrases he would say. And I would say I can hear his voice um, if I tell myself to try to hear him saying one of them. Uh, but my mother, I don't think so, because, you know, she died. In fact, yesterday was the anniversary 29 years ago. So I think it was too long ago. I don't remember. Maybe a little bit, because there was this one recording of her after she died on my my message machine. I couldn't remember what that was called. She was talking about how much she loved my friends. And I still can kind of, because I've replayed it so many times, I still can kind of hear it. So is there emotion attached to your memories? Yeah, see, I don't really actually have a, a sensation of an emotion. You, you'd think okay. I would. I can remember how I felt, but I don't feel it again. Do you feel like your memories are accurate? I know they're probably not because I watched a Brain Games episode <laughs> where they explained <laughs> how like five different people have five different, totally different memories of the same thing. So I think that nobody's memories are as accurate as they think they are. It seems like if you could visualize strongly, you would have a better memory because you could picture what you saw. Like my daughter, she remembers colors so well. And it's just because she can just pop it into her head and go, yep, that was a greenhouse. Like, I remember I'm looking at it right now, you know, and right. whereas I'm like, right. I have no idea what color that house was. <laughs> did you do well in school or did you struggle? I also have ADHD. And so I did fine with very little effort. <laughs> and I struggled with my teachers telling me <clears throat> I was a space cadet and I was always zoning out, you know, cause I was bored out of my mind, but um, I never had to work hard. I got A's and B's occasional C without lifting a finger. So <laughs> wow. I never really learned how to work hard. i um, still struggle with that, but. Okay. So when you would get bored and zone out, what was happening? What, what does zoning out mean to you? <laughs> Gosh, I have no idea. Just thinking about something else. Okay. Yeah, I certainly, I mean, I don't know. You know, some people say that they got aphantasia after a trauma. And, you know, I wonder, because like I said, I went through trauma, but I don't remember if I could visualize as a kid or not. I have no idea. We've talked a little bit about what some of the upsides and some of the downsides of aphantasia are. Is there any of those you'd like to identify or talk about? Yeah, see, part of me, like a lot, I've seen a lot of people like say, like they've missed out on so much when they have aphantasia and they're like grieving what they, you know, that they've lost something. That, but I feel like it would be too cluttered and distracting to always have images. Like, I don't like, I'm like, how is it safe for you to drive? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't understand. <laughs> to me, it seems like it would be really distracting to have images in my head all the time. <laughs> but at the same time, it feels like it would be amazing to be able to like picture whatever I wanted to. You know, whenever I tell people about this, they're always like, can you picture an apple? Can you picture that? And they'll be like, can you picture your kid's face? And I'm like, no, I can't picture anything. So I think being able to picture your loved ones I feel like it would be really nice, you know, especially people who have passed, but I don't have any experience with being able to do that. So I don't have any sort of sense of having lost anything, you know? Right. So if you could wave a magic wand and get rid of your aphantasia, would you do it? Oh my goodness. I think I would, because I'm would, very would. curious uh, what the heck people are talking about. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm the same way. Super curious, but I'd almost, I almost, I always say I'd like to take it for a test drive. That's what I was going to say. Right. It does yeah. make me a little nervous. Like, what if I don't like it, you know? <laughs> right. But I think that I would. I mean, imagine being able to literally picture yourself on a peaceful beach lying in a hammock, you know, like people tell you to do if you're supposed to be like relaxing or meditating or something. That to me, I think that would be really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> right. So do you think it would change who you are at all? Or, or would it just be an added bonus? I have no idea. That's one of the things I think about. Like, would I be me without this? It's so it's so core to who I am, right? And 
you know, I'm a very creative person and I, the way I do things works. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to mess with that. Right. I, I wonder if I would truly be me if that changed. Right. It does seem like a very strong element of who I am. Right. It's so dramatically different from what apparently is so many other people's experience. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your insights and your answers there. That was very good. Cool. Well, thank you so much. It was nice to meet you. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, follow and engage with us and share it with your friends and family as we continue to explore this fascinating subject. For additional information about this episode or Shane's Brain, check out the show notes. Thanks for listening to the Discovering Your Mind podcast. You are beautifully unique.